Hi, my name is Peter Schichtel, and I write the American Indian Artifact column for the American Digger magazine. Along with the written text of the magazine, we offer a video supplement to aid you, our viewers, in understanding some of the items we knew which are presenting in, in the text. What's commonly referred to as the trade period is more accurately described archaeologically as the contact period when Europeans first arrived on the eastern shores of the United States and began to exchange and interchange cultures and items with the American Indian. A lot of what had gone on was trade. The Europeans came to shore looking for, for furs and things like that, specific, specifically beaver and, and otter pelts and mink pelts. And the American Indians were more than happy to exchange what they were able to get fairly easily for these exotic and new items the Europeans had to offer, such as knives, axe heads, beads, as we stated in the previous video, pots, anything like that. That would One of the first very common items in which the Indians were, were most interested in early on was knives, axes, and tomahawks. Metal was virtually unknown in the, in the Indian world, um, except for the exclusion of, of, of some copper tools which were found in the Great Lakes region. Alloys such as steel, brass, copper, pewter, silver, uh, metals like that were just virtually unknown to them. Mysterious and exotic, kept an edge. They were a Stone Age culture. Everything that they, they had functioning was basically made from stone, made from bone, made from wood. Not as durable and certainly not as, as practical in use as a knife would be. After the early explorers had gone along the east coast of the United States and began to chart and map the regions, what followed them was trappers and traders who moved into the interior and looking for pelts. Beaver skin, otter skin, mink, highly, highly valued in the European market. A lot of the trappers and traders went deep into the interior looking for those things. Realized early on that American Indians were more than happy to trade for some of the exotic items the trappers and traders had to offer for pelts. A very lucrative, mar lucrative market was set up. They began to set up trading posts in the interior, which offered Indians some of the items that they would certainly love to have. Things like knives, axes, cooking pots, metals for different sorts of things they could work into other items. And it was very, very, again, a very lucrative trade. And this whole system of barter was set up. One of the chief items that first came along, very important to the American Indian, were knives. The, the, the original knives that Indians used, stone knives, as mentioned in the earlier column, were quite primitive, held an edge for some time, but required a lot of resharpening, and eventually became spent and were discarded. What we have here are examples of one reproduction Indian knife, just to let you see exactly how that compares to the mo more modern trade item. This is a reproduction of what Indian stone knives most likely look like. Wood handle, stone blade, chipped with a fine edge, wrapped with sinew. It was a stone tool, and every time it needed resharpening, chipping was done along the edges, creating a new sharp surface. They didn't last very long. When you compare that to an item like this, which is an Indian trade item, from the Northern Plains, which is called a Green River Knife, designated by, identified by these pins, you can see how something like this would surely razzle-dazzle the American Indian when compared to something like this. This again came down from a very old collection, very worn, very used. Knives during the contact period in an Indian culture was an extremely useful and very commonly used item, just like in the modern kitchen when you find knives are used almost on a daily basis by everybody. A lot of knives that are found in collections or even dug up metal detecting or excavated on sites are extremely worn, extremely used, extremely beaten down in a lot of cases, as illustrated by some of these here. Here we have here a trade knife. This was a very popular style with the three stars. This, originally this knife was probably a good 14 or 15 inches long, but extremely sharpened down in use, which is very common in the American Indian culture, as a lot of these pieces were just endlessly used. These are two other trade knives that came from the plains. I believe this one would come out of Colorado, and this would come out of northern Montana. 
Both of these knives show extensive use. This one, more than this one. But you can see by the wear and the handle how this knife was just really, really used. Which is com very common in a lot of American Indian artifacts like this, in a lot of these trade period pieces, where Indians just used them and used them and used them until there's really nothing was left. Trade axes and tomahawks were also very popular items and became very desirable to the American Indian in terms of utilitarian axes and in terms of tomahawks for fighting, for defense, and, and belt axes, very popular items. Items like this, which originally had a pipe on it at one point, became items of pride and were adorned by Indians, by the American Indian to use and to also to display. This trade period axe head, basically it's an axe head, there's no handle on it obviously, um, was, was late in the trade period, probably about 1840, 1850 and actually was found in New Jersey, oddly enough. These are reproduction axes that are still made today and still basically exist in the Indian trade in some of the, the, the further out areas, but, but not just American Indians. A lot of people, campers and things like that, hikers and trappers, still hunters, still buy these sort of items and keep them on them. Blades, as I mentioned earlier, were generally sold by the lot and may have been bought like this without handles in which they would have hoped that American Indians themselves may have hafted them. The availability of metals also improved hunting. The stone arrow was replaced with a sharp steel blade-like arrow point, which is able to do far more damage, far more quicker to any game that Indians may be pursuing. These are some different examples of arrow points that were found basically at a Cheyenne battle site, Indian against Indian. Some of these are very small for small game, just cut out of flat steel, larger and of course very large which could have been for bigger game like buffalo and things like that. These date from about the mid 19th century. Not only were cutting implements important in the trade period, items were brought in that basically changed the way the American Indian lived on a daily basis. Things like clay pipes, adornments, bangles, jewelry. Cooking implements like kettles and pots became very important and became very standard. A lot of American Indians got involved in exchanging sugar for different trade items. Boiling down uh, maple sap into maple syrup was a very popular item in the Northwest, Northeast. Done in heavy, heavy metal pots. These are Walcottville Company pots. They were called feast kettles by a lot of people at the time of that period. They were designated by the T shape here in the handle attachment, the hand forged handle, and of course the brass hammered pot. These were used for, again, boiling down tree sap to make maple syrup, cooking, and just about anything else you can imagine. These two pots, Again, it's a larger example with the same T configuration and the same hand forged handle. Both date from about 1820 to 1830 and were used in the Indian trade period. An item like this became indispensable to a family. It was used extensively until the point of being completely depleted. Adorning themselves with a lot of the different sorts of metals, silver, copper, brass, that the traders offered the indigenous people of North America were was very important to them. Certain sorts of looks and people became in a sense obsessed with a lot of the things like that. To have themselves covered with the proper beads and the proper bangles and jingles and things like that. As, as items like pots and other items began to become depleted, a lot of American Indians would create their own adornments, their own tools out of what was left, oh, what was left over from depleted items. Um, and they can be found at archaeological sites today. Bits of copper could be fashioned into rings, tiny rings, which could have been ear rings,
nicer brass item, rolled copper, could have been fashioned into beads where a string would be threaded through. These clusters of beads were found in an Indian site in the Finger Lakes regions of New York, actually a historic Iroquois Indian site. Copper beads like this with an Indian fashioned adornment of some sort. And this very nice and very interesting armband, which shows signs of being basically chopped out. Not your European manufacture, but probably from something salvaged like, like a worn out pot or something else like that. This particular small collection right here was found in upstate New York. There are some very small white heart seed beads which are very popular with the Hudson Bay Trade Company. And then there are some Indian made arrow points which are probably again snipped from bits of copper left over from spent tools. Smoking tobacco was introduced to the Europeans by the American Indian. Europeans were quickly able to adapt to smoking and making their own pipes, which in turn the American Indians were quick to want to acquire because it made smoking tobacco a lot easier. These are different pipes that were found in the Ohio River Valley at colonial era, era Indian sites. These were of European manufacture or could be actually stateside manufacture, but they were of white manufacture. These particular, for, for white use, for colonial use generally, though Indians of course can have access to just about anything. This particular pipe, why I say that, refer to these that way, is because this particular pipe was made simply for Indian trade and was used by American Indians in, in the Ohio River Valley area. The North American Indian culture was not a money-based culture as a European society or economies were. They basically existed through trade, through trade with each other, and through trade with the whites in latter years. They were very frugal in what they had, and as items began to wear out, they were quickly converted to others. Anything they could find left over from the white settlers or the soldiers was basically adapted in many different ways, as evidenced by a lot of the pieces we have here today. What I have here is an example, one of my prize examples of Indian ingenuity. It's a war club from the Slaughter Collection, which were items gathered in the Great Plains in the late 19th century. This was made by using trade blades such as this and inserting them into a wooden handle to becoming a very deadly weapon. As mentioned a moment ago, as things became depleted, American Indians are very quick to adapt them into other tools. This particular item, which came out of Fort Laramie, Wyoming, would appear to be a simple Indian hoe with its original wood handle. This was found under the floorboards of a couple of buildings out there. There was different items found and they were in an amazing state of preservation. Close examination has revealed that this really was a ladle that was pounded out into a flat shape handle and remains of the handle were pushed through and bent through a hole in the handle so again a great example of ingenuity on the part of the aboriginal people of North America other items found at Fort Laramie were things like this simple hand chopper. Again, pounded down with, with material, it may be some sort of hemp forced in there to give the handle tightness. Of course, the handles, the original handle's been broken, but the hemp was forced in to tighten the blade in the handle. Fort Laramie again, dates probably from about the 1850s or 60s. Final item from Fort Laramie, was this. It's a model 1860 cavalry saber which has been broken, 
ground down and altered into probably what would be an agricultural implement. This again was found in the remains of buildings that were being renovated in Fort Laramie. Still can illustrate the blood groove and all that. Again, a great example. Well, that wraps up the second part of our three-part series on American Indian trade items. On behalf of the staff of American Digger Magazine, we hope you enjoy the video and continue reading. Thank you very much and have a great evening.